Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update this evening. I hope you're doing really great. I hope you've been having a terrific Thursday thus far and we are going to be looking at what is going on. A couple of systems, we want to quickly go ahead and take a look at them and the main one that I'm concerned about is our Gulf uh, disturbance or impending Gulf system that is likely to become a named storm, potentially a hurricane as we're going to be heading into the early part of next week and eventually it will be moving inland heading toward the middle part of the new week. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. All right, so let us go ahead and get straight into what is going on. Now, as we look at the latest outlook map from NHC, there we can see Franklin, still a tropical storm, but should be uh, becoming a hurricane very soon. And we have our three disturbances out there. Remnants of Emily losing potential to redevelop. Meanwhile, 92L is gaining potential to develop into something. And in the case where 92L manages to become a named storm, it will acquire the name Idalia, provided it is before the system that is going to be moving into the Northwest Caribbean and then eventually into the Gulf. But overall, the next two names to be used for the season, Idalia and Jose. So uh, let's see what's going to be happening. There's no 100% guarantee that the new disturbance will become Idalia, although things look that way. Some models are uh, keeping it that 92L won't really develop into anything much. But we'll see. As of the latest for Franklin, Franklin is still a tropical storm, currently not really a bother to anyone, and it should become a hurricane soon. It might even manage to reach major hurricane status and in terms of possible impacts in Bermuda, if in Bermuda you want to keep watch because if the storm is close enough in proximity where it is going to unleash at least some tropical storm conditions, a watch or potentially a warning could be issued. So you want to keep watch on the system as we're going to be heading into the new week. Please heed any warnings and listen to your local officials. And then now we want to go ahead and look back at the satellite. So here we can see our systems. And by the way, to the east of the Lesser Antilles from, from around uh, Guadalupe we'll going southward to uh, maybe around St. Vincent. That is in association with the remnants of Tropical Storm Gert. They have been lingering around for that uh, for some time. That low pressure area has been in the region. So occasionally we have these uh, areas of showers and thunderstorms popping up in association with it, but not really moving around too much, although it is helping to induce some more unstable weather across some parts of Barbados. Nothing crazy, maybe just some passing showers at times, overcast skies. And so let's head deeper or closer rather into the Caribbean. Here we have Franklin up there. As I said, it is sustaining winds of 60 miles per hour. There has been some activity in parts of Haiti, also heading to sections of Jamaica, going to Cuba near the Cayman Islands, and especially over into Central America. There is an upper level low. We can see that spin uh, over there, and there's also a trough in the region, and then that disturbance is going to be making its way into the Northwest Caribbean, where we could see development almost immediately. We won't see anything right now because it is over land. It is those warm ocean waters that allow for uh, that intensification, that development to take place. So land interaction is one of the inhibiting factors. But let's see what's going to be happening with it. As of the 2 p.m. update, the formation chance has increased to 60%. So since yesterday, when it was first marked, NHC has been going hard on this one to say, hey, this is going to be developing. And the chance has not been stagnant for multiple updates. So with each passing update, the chance increases. Uh, and now it is at 60%. And I think it is very likely that by this weekend in the uh, in the Northwest Caribbean, there will be at least a tropical depression, potentially a tropical storm. And regardless of development, this is going to be producing a lot of heavy rainfall across Central America, Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, even going down to Costa Rica because there's a lot of disorganized activity right now. Nothing is defined. So there is quite a bit of activity. And in the, ca uh, in the case of flooding, please do not take any unnecessary risks. But this system should drift up to the north into the eastern Gulf of Mexico and we we could see further intensification and this system here is not expected to be a slow mover by most models so it should be moving at a rather uh, moderate maybe it's a quick pace and that would be one of the factors that would help us out because if this was moving slowly over that bubbling Gulf of Mexico not literally but just emphasizing how warm it is over there if that was the case and other conditions such as that uh, those upper level winds are conducive then we would definitely see some crazy
crazy intensification as what we've witnessed with previous systems that were not initially expected to be that terrible. But uh, we sometimes want to go back in history and take a look at some other systems and compare those conditions to what we're seeing right now. So there is a chance that whatever forms could become a hurricane. And if you're along the eastern Gulf Coast, I would say from the Gulf Coast of Mississippi, Alabama, going to Florida, especially Florida, you want to keep a close watch on this. And also for the western part of Cuba, there could be impacts there as well, even if it is when the system is uh, a tropical depression or tropical storm, there could still be that heavy rainfall, which poses a threat in terms of the flooding that it triggers. So please be mindful of that, guys. And in terms of the conditions out there, looking at the dry air map, this is a big contrast to what was there over a week ago. Very dense plumes of dry air. And now here we can see that that isn't really a problem right now. Some dry air out ahead of that uh, next system that will be emerging from Africa. And by the way, speaking of that, as I saw, as you guys would have seen on the thumbnail, the Caribbean will need to pay close attention to what is happening out there as we head to the next week or two. And I'll be going into why in a moment. And so we can see across the Caribbean, the Gulf dry air is not a problem. The temperatures are off the charts. It's just the wind shear that might help to inhibit some intensification and also the rate at which the system is uh, moving and also the land interaction. So those are some of the inhibiting factors we want to watch out for. But overall, all models sniffing at something in the Gulf, going from maybe tropical storm, tropical depression, all the way up to a potential hurricane and only time will tell what's going to be happening. So for the aforementioned areas, uh, persons along the eastern Gulf Coast of the U.S., especially in Florida, you want to keep watch. So far, the major models out there are calling for potential landfall in Florida, whatever the system becomes. But I'm here to keep you posted, so stick with me and you guys will never be uh, void of any updates. And so let's go on to this map here. Now, this is from the Climate Prediction Center. So we're focusing on these two weeks here, week two and three. I know there's a lot of shading going on, but we're focusing over here. Uh, in the Atlantic Basin and we can see the time frame here so this goes out uh, from the 30th of the month to September 5th and those shaded red areas indicate where we could see development and the formation chance get, uh, gets higher as we head to that burgundy shade so a tropical wave these upcoming tropical waves they will encounter conducive conditions the temperatures are off the charts as we saw there isn't a whole lot of dry air so it's really just the winter that might pose a problem for these tropical waves but overall we are in the peak of the hurricane season if you're hearing some rumbling that's the thunder outside so uh, we're heading into the peak of the season the peak month is September September and September begins in just a couple of days and a lot more activities on the horizon. Models are definitely expecting it, uh, things to get active out there in the MDR, our main development region. And so I will be on top of all that is happening for you guys. So again, we have that disturbance. The chances are rapidly increasing for it to develop. Eventually, it will be designated as Invest 93L, where the National Hurricane Center is closely watching it for development. Model guidance becomes available and we get a better picture of what could happen with it. We also have Franklin likely to become a hurricane very soon. Bermuda should be on watch for potential impacts next week. And then we have these future tropical waves that will be coming off Africa with the potential of development. But I'm here to keep you posted and that is pretty much it for now. So I hope you found this video to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you once I get the chance. And as always, remember to be weatherwise.